This is a 14 channel RC transmitter that doesn't just control a drone but also shows its live video feed. In this video, I'll design a 14 channel RC transmitter with an integrated OpenSD video system. Instead of trusting specs and theory, I wanted to see how much I could actually rely on it in real flight. Along the way, we had to solve problems ranging from unstable shaky video to a controlled live feed by changing the system itself, not masking it in the software. There are plenty of DIY transmitters and digital video systems available, but most of them are expensive, locked down or just simple. So I decided to build my own and test where it truly works. This system runs OpenSD, an open source digital video link that transmits SD video and telemetry using high gain Wi-Fi antennas. This isn't new to the channel. During the drone tank build, we already worked with OpenSD, but we didn't go in much detail. And this time we'll go all in. I actually attempted a transmitter like this back in 2020. It failed badly. OpenSD systems are bulky and the 7 inch screen itself make everything awkward. So holding it in one hand and transmitter in other is just stupid. So this time I decided one device, one unit. At the heart of this build is a Raspberry Pi 4 running OpenSD. For RC transmission and reception, I'll use Raspberry Pi Pico boards with NRF modules. Everything else, switches, joysticks, indicators come together step by step. And like always, I'll start with the CAD model. I went through multiple design concepts, most of them failed immediately. And this is the only design that works. A 7 inch display sits at the center. Primary joysticks are positioned for proper grip. Toggle switches and potentiometers are placed on both sides. Six programmable tactile buttons line the bottom. On the top left, an auxiliary joystick control is provided, either for a 2-axis gimbal or two servos for future tracking and aiming systems. This layout isn't just functional, it's already designed for future problems. Now I'll start the assembly. All the parts are 3D printed at 0.2mm layer height with 20% infill. Printer settings and files are in the description. This is the front shell. At the back, mounts are provided for electronics. This analog joystick controls camera servos. I have mounted it with M2.5 screws and soldered all the wires. The charging indicator cover is printed in translucent PLA and friction fits into place. Green SMD LEDs sit behind it for battery status. Three sets of tactile switches share a common ground. Button snaps into the frame and switches lock from the top. It's clean and tight. For the main controls, I'll be using the PS4 analog joystick modules. They offer excellent potentiometers and high accuracy, perfect for drones. They don't come with a PCB or top lever, so I mounted them on a custom 3D printed plate and reused levers from the cheap joysticks. Everything locks in with M2.5 screws. Once installed, the transmitter finally starts looking real. The display is a WaveShare 7 inch touch panel. I've had it for a year and this is the first time I peeled the protective film. The flexible tempered glass is extremely tricky to apply. If you value peace, don't do it yourself. A U shaped HDMI connector keeps the cable short and clean. I mounted the display into the frame using M3 screws. Behind it sits the Raspberry Pi 4. I carefully soldered the power input and USB 3.0 wires. Next to it, a Raspberry Pi Pico handles RC transmission through an NRF module. Everything mounts onto the center plate. Yes, the wiring looks chaotic, but once organized, it actually makes sense. And the wiring diagram is linked below. A 12 volt DC jack handles charging. Type-C can also work. At the back, I added an exhaust fan. Mesh intakes allow airflow. A 2S 10 ampere BMS manages charging and protection. Power comes from four 18650 lithium ion cells. The display alone draws serious current, so this is necessary. Important note here is the BMS only shows output power when a charger is connected. I double checked everything with a multimeter, then I closed the case.
and suddenly this actually looks like a transmitter. I installed the knobs Attach the sunshade and connected the signal antenna. For video transmission, I'll be using the TP-Link Archer T1300 antenna and yes, it folds. The OpenSD receiver uses a Raspberry Pi 02W powered by a voltage converter and cooled with its own fan. It supports up to 3S input. The RC receiver uses another Raspberry Pi Pico with an NRF module and a 33 volt regulator. It connects to the flight controller using a single S-Bus wire. Simple, clean and effective. The full transmitter and receiver setup is ready. It weighs more than I expected but it's acceptable for version 1. The RC firmware is already fledged and the OpenHD is loaded from the HD card from the bottom of the case. So overall it feels really premium from the DIY point of view. Now let's do its real test. I'll bring out the MacX series drone from the previous video and remove its receiver and replace it with the new RC and OpenHD receiver. I have tested a CUAV Neo4 SE GPS on this drone. If you want to check the performance of this GPS, then click on the I button to watch it. Now let me give you a demo. First power on the receiver and then the transmitter. The system will boot and show you the live footage. While stationary, the video quality looks amazing. Now we'll check the latency of the RC transmitter. I have connected the drone to the mission planner using telemetry device. And now when I'll move the joystick and buttons, you can see the quick movements in the graph. Now let's test it in the air. In the air, it's a disaster. The footage shakes violently. Actually, the camera is directly connected to the frame, so every motor vibration goes straight to the sensor. I have designed the new vibration dampers. It holds the camera from the back. Now let's test it again. It's even worse than the first test. At this point, two things are obvious. In the first test, I used a heavier 3S battery that reduced the vibrations and motor RPM. But in the second test, I used a lighter 4S battery that increases the motor vibrations and RPM. And the camera itself is extremely light, making the dampers ineffective. So now I have redesigned the camera mount and placed the dampers vertically like it's placed in all the drones. And this time I have also added mass to the camera by adding steel balls to it. Now let's see how it performs.
We have tested this drone and compared to the previous two flight and this time the footage is clearly more stable. So the design update clearly did its job. There are still minor vibrations but those are coming from the drone platform, not from the transmitter or the video feed. Now about the RC range, the NRF module claims up to 1 km range. I haven't pushed it that far yet so I won't confirm the maximum range. But I have tested it for about 250 meters and it worked well. And for safety you can use the return to home flight feature if the RC link is lost. Coming to the OpenHD video link, with these TP-Link RZ 1300 antennas, the video remains stable for up to 150 meters. Beyond that, the video starts freezing. So under 150 meters, it's completely usable. If you need more range, you can simply upgrade these antennas and no system changes are required. The compatible antennas options are listed on the official OpenHD page. I have linked it in the description. So overall this transmitter is reliable for drone operations and for ground vehicles like a UGV, this video feed works even better. In fact my upcoming project is exactly that, a UGV. So guys I have also started a poll on my website where you can vote on my upcoming projects and videos. So take a look if you would like to help shape what comes next. This concludes RC transmitter version 1. And next time I'll design a more compact version 2 with mobile display support. So guys if you have liked this video and found it informative then please like share and subscribe to my Mac Ninja YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching it. I'll catch you later with the next project.